Well, hey, I'm not turkey hunting yet. Uh, season's actually right around the corner. It's the juvenile weekend. In the meantime, my gun is empty. I'm going to show you a few tips on uh, how to film your own turkey hunts. And this is what I know. This is how to film it on a budget. So I'm sure a lot of y'all would like to get into it, but don't have or don't want to spend the money. You see this equipment these guys use for uh, hunting shows and even on some YouTube channels you see some expensive equipment and uh, you don't want to go that far but you want to get some decent video so I'm going to show you some more affordable options and more importantly the technique on actually doing it because that's the tough part is getting that shot on film so uh, I guess first I'll uh, cover the equipment what I have here I don't know if you can buy a camouflage tripod. I painted this the same way I painted my gun, just with Rust-Oleum, and that's just preference. You can use a black tripod, you can wrap it in camo tape, or you can do whatever, you can paint it like this. But um, you're gonna obviously need a camera and probably a tripod as well. So I'm gonna set this up here, show you um, a good starter camera. This is a Panasonic V250. It's a, actually a HC V250. Um, it, I got mine for about 250 bucks or so, and for the price, it's excellent. It's got a 90 times intelligent zoom, which means it's a 50 times optical zoom, which is more than you'll ever need. Plus, with enhanced digital, it'll go up to 90 and still get clear video. So that's excellent. You could even use these as binoculars. I've done that a bunch of times. Um, the video quality is great. It's got great uh, automatic stabilization to the video so it's not shaky and uh, it also will um, take good low light. It's got different settings where you can actually go in and change it to low light setting and get an, a good 20 minutes more of, of filming in the, you know, in the late evening or whatever. So uh, definitely I would recommend this or any Panasonic camcorder. Just read the specs on uh, you know the zoom and the all the other specs uh, the microphone this is a built-in stereo mic that's got real decent quality um, if you want to step it up a little bit if you may eventually want to or you may want to keep it simple what I'm filming this with right now is a Panasonic HC HC V750 and uh, it comes with a port to plug in an external microphone so I'm filming with an even better microphone on that and it, that camera also has a uh, manual focus option as well. It has a little wheel that you can roll to, to uh, use manual focus if you want. But we're going to keep it simple since you're wanting to get started. We're not going to worry about special microphones or manual focus or anything like that. You just want a good camera that takes great video. has a good zoom on it. It's easy to use and um, doesn't cost too much. And that's where this camera comes in. They have other models you can look at. This is what I have the most experience with. I know Canon also makes good cameras, Nikon, other brands. So just look into different cameras, different specs, read reviews online. But I would recommend the HC V250 uh, Panasonic. I've filmed a bunch of hunts with this before I stepped it up to the next level. But um, enough of that camera. We're going to go on down to the tripod. Now I use the what I call Walmart tripods for uh, plenty of hunting. I've got, I've gone through several of them, and they usually end up breaking one way or another, and they're not really smooth, which is okay. You can still get good video, but it's not going to be as good. But don't let that stop you. If if you're on a budget and you just want to get a basic, cheap tripod, you can go to Walmart or whatever store, whatever big box store sells camera stuff. Just uh, get one that's light and easy to carry around, and just get whatever you think will work best. Now this one here is a slick. I don't know the uh, model number. I don't remember. It's got some weird name. I'll try to put a link to it if I can find it online. This costs about $130 and it has a fluid head so it takes much more smooth footage. It's really good with that. And it's a little heavier but it's also more sturdy. I don't think it's going to break anytime soon. It does have this knob to tighten and loosen like that. But uh, if you get one of the cheaper ones, usually you just twist the handle to tighten and loosen. Uh, that would probably be easier for starting out because it's, it's more hands-free that way. 
and it may not be as smooth but it'll get plenty good footage um, so uh, tripods don't get too picky if you want to start simple and work your way up that's what I would do don't start with a whole bunch of nice gear and then decide that you don't want to do it anymore it's better to start simple so uh, that's the tripod I'm using now and this wire here this is the charging cord for my camcorder and uh, I have it plugged into this battery pack this now this I got from Walmart it was like 20 bucks it's called pocket juice they have different models different sizes get one of the bigger ones for your camera and um, it's USB you can charge your phone on it as well and this one even comes with a built-in LED flashlight that's really bright good for blood tracking at night during deer season so uh, just get you one of those USB battery packs they're cheap and they're super effective the replacement batteries or the spare batteries you can buy for this camera are expensive they do that on purpose to make more money so I wouldn't recommend buying more batteries for this I would just recommend getting one of these for 20 bucks and take the charging cord with you and when your battery gets low just plug it in you can keep recording it charges while it records so uh, that's about all you're going to need for that definitely make sure you've got extra power one way or another because you don't want your battery to go dead make sure your memory cards class 10 for the video it's a hd video camera so it needs a high speed card and i've got like a 16 or a 32 gig i wouldn't go any lower than that just because you never know when you're going to leave the camera rolling for 10 15 minutes because a bird's right there and you can't move so make sure you got more memory space than you need and more battery power than you need and um, tripod can be as cheap or as fancy as you want it to be obviously a fluid head will give you better results a more expensive tripod will last you longer generally because they're better built but don't let a cheap tripod stop you from getting into it so um, well, with all that to say uh, that's about all the equipment you really need to know about um, you can get into the more fancy stuff if you want I'm not gonna cover that in this video because this is about getting started on a budget so now I've got my setup I'm gonna get into the technique here you can see I'm propped up against these three cedar trees it breaks up my outline pretty well and um, you, obviously you want to look for that anyway when you're hunting regardless and you probably know that but keep it in mind especially when you're filming the more cover the better because you got your arm here you got your shotgun here if you shoot right-handed like I do I'm shouldering on the right shoot right-handed you want the tripod on your right side obviously flip it around if you're left-handed um, this way you can go you can have your gun up like this make minimal movements over to your camera make little adjustments zoom it in whatever and then you can just slowly take your hand back like that you don't want it over here also because the door on all cameras comes out on the left side of the camera and that may be an issue if you're shooting left-handed you're gonna to have to figure out whatever works best for you don't stick to one method just because I told you whatever is the most comfortable for you to operate the gun and the camera with minimal movement that's what I would go with so uh, I like it on the right side when you're setting your tripod up next to you you want it close but not too close you don't want to be bumping the tripod when you're getting your gun situated but you don't want to be reaching all the way out here for your camera either so find a comfortable position adjust the legs on the tripod so it's level you can see I'm on a slope so this bottom leg here has to come out a little farther so just make sure it's level and uh, you know swing your camera around a little bit make sure it stays level and then get it pointed in a position where you think the bird's going to come or where you're going to get a shot and leave it there until the bird does it otherwise and then you can do your adjustments uh, so you let's say let's say now we're set up we got the camera here it's in a good position I can operate it like this the guns on my knee the gobbler just fired off about 50 60 yards through those honeysuckle bushes and he may pop up anywhere here or he may skirt me so say so he's coming up here you want your camera to be on ready to film even if you have to press record and leave it recording for 10 minutes you can go back and edit out that 10 minutes later don't worry about recording too much it's way better than not recording enough so say he say you've got your camera here ready to record and he you see a big red head pop up and he's a little bit to the right you can you know you can swing and shoot him you're not going to get it on video and he's looking so that's where it gets tough and uh, if you can see them coming from farther away it's always better but then again they can also see you from farther away so uh, you want to 
it's difficult to get the shot on video and don't get frustrated if you mess it up a few times and uh, definitely don't rush the shot on a bird just to get it on video uh, I'm probably guilty of that several times and it'll cause you to miss a turkey because you go to just you know you go to squeeze a shot off real quick and you don't squeeze it off you just kind of shoot and end up missing the bird and he flies away and so then you've got an excellent video of you missing a bird I've got several of those that I'm not going to show you but um that's uh, one thing to keep in mind when he does get in close, that he's in the frame and he's about to go. Don't rush the shot. It's better to let him go or just shoot him when he's off screen. Otherwise, you could screw up an easy shot on a bird like I've done plenty of times. Let's say your hand's on the camera, not on the gun. You can very slowly creep it towards the bird, at least get him on video, and then wait for him to go behind something or whatever you never know with turkeys what's going to happen he could give you a shot you might get away but uh, definitely keep movement to a minimum wear gloves and a face mask I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's necessary but um, gloves and a face mask will I guess it'll it'll make you a little bit less noticeable but movement is always going to be picked off when they're looking at you if it's 20 25 30 yards looking in your direction trying to find that hen if you move anything doesn't matter how much camo you have on if you move he's going to see that and probably think it's not right more often than not you get busted by simple movement and i'm sure you all know that if if you've been turkey hunting much at all so camouflage is good it's helpful but it's not gonna it's not gonna conceal all your movements so you still got to be very slow and if you got to move your your hand over to the camera do it like this no faster and keep an eye on that bird and if he shows signs that he's looking at you just freeze if, if you got the bird looking at you just don't even move you're gonna have to wait till he starts moving before you go up adjust your camera or vice versa come down and get your gun so it's twice as much movement as just shooting a gun plus aiming a camera aiming a shotgun it's difficult you're gonna mess up just try to uh, either get the shot on video and have a bird walk away or shoot the bird off screen don't try to rush the shot and end up missing or injuring a bird because speaking from experience it's very easy to do that under the pressure of trying to get it all in video so with all that said I don't think there's much else to cover that's the basic technique of it I will say it's a lot easier to get footage obviously filming for someone else but that's not what this is about it is easier to get footage if you are filming in an open field or you have a strutter decoy or you're sitting in a blind where you can get away with a lot more movement if you're all about the footage you can't beat that but at the same time i like to hunt in the woods a lot i like to call them in just me and the turkey just have them come in that's my preferred style of hunting and it's more difficult to film but it's also addictive and you may get into this you may or may not get addicted to it and if you do you're eventually going to start buying better camera gear or whatever but for now just keep it simple um, you don't need anything fancy to film your own hunts this camera will get great quality footage um, tripods even less important but you could get like around the hundred dollar range you can find a fluid head tripod if you look around uh, or you can just get a thirty or forty dollar tripod from Walmart like I said uh, something just something to hold your camera good camera for the video a good setup where you're blended in well and uh, a lot of patience and move very slowly don't forget your backup power um, just keep it simple and focus on the hunt and uh, don't get impatient when that bird's getting close just try to get it on video try not to get busted try to get a good shot on that bird and um, hopefully this will help you out a little bit uh, I'm sure I'm missing a few things that I forgot to cover uh, just leave comments or whatever if you have questions that I didn't answer for you so uh, good luck to everyone, and uh, thanks for watching this, and uh, we'll have some turkey hunting video hopefully coming up here soon, so uh, stay tuned for that.